Welcome back to Life on the Moose. Today we're going to start on the interior walls of the off-grid tiny cabin and finish up the loose ends on the ceiling. We'll also have some footage of a North American mammal that's not seen very often, but I think you're going to enjoy. So sit back and have fun watching, and be sure to tap that subscribe button below so you never miss what's coming next. It's good to see you. I have a lot of wood for the walls. Before we put some wood on the walls, for a cost, I don't like drywall. I really don't like doing it. But to save a few bucks, we are going to put drywall on this wall, on just the west facing wall. And then we can make it look all pretty afterwards. But So we're gonna put drywall on this wall and we're gonna put uh, siding, tongue and groove siding, pine, all the way around the uh, the other three walls. It's going to look awesome. I got a fairly decent deal on the pine, but it was still more than I wanted to spend. I have a bunch of 1x6 material that I thought was going to be enough for about half of the walls. As it turns out, probably enough for about one or two walls, uh, at the very most. And yeah, that wood needs to go through a process of being planed. Needs to be planed some, uh, needs to be straightened out, for, you know, with a skill saw, a table saw. Uh, so it's not ready. And I don't have enough. So I bought pine. So yeah, let's get to work. I have to unload the truck. There's about 20,000 pounds of, of uh, sheetrock and lumber out there. That's exaggerating a little bit. It just feels like it. All right. Nice and cozy in here. Heat hasn't been on all day, but the... Uh, the sun was out for a while this morning. Life on the moose. There's always something exciting happening. Thanks for tuning in again. I appreciate it. All right. Well, you want to grab one side of this sheetrock and then I'll meet you out by the truck. What's that? I keep forgetting you can't help. It's like a, another person sitting here. So, All right. I'll get it. show you around let me show you my plans here in case you were wondering i'm gonna put sheetrock on that wall first get it up and out of the way and also while i'm here working on the other walls i can um, tape and mud it and that way there's a chance for that to dry so okay drywall my number one piece of advice for drywall is buy a piece of vacant land in the middle of nowhere, build a cabin on it, and then do whatever you want with the inside. I am not a drywall expert. I'm not going to profess to be. There are probably things and techniques where the pros watching this are going to say, yeah, don't do that. So, you know, it's a cabin. Not being inspected or permitted. You know, I have a little bit of a construction background. Uh, I used to do it for a living. So I know enough to be dangerous, and I know enough to get by. So that's what it is. It's sheetrock. It's pretty straightforward. Just going to screw it into the studs, mud the holes, tape the seams, mud the seams. That's about it. All right. Have fun watching. 
Oh, if I screw up, just yell. Just, okay. <laughs> Well, I lucked out with the first two pieces. My space was exactly, well, it was about an inch longer than four feet. So yeah, by the time I add the boards on the end walls, and of course I'll have trim on everything, to cover up my mistakes. So yeah, lucked out, didn't have to cut. Just have that little bit on top. And then I'm also gonna do, I'm probably gonna have leftover just a bottom of the windows just to make sure the surface is on the same plane for my baseboard.
just like that. It's almost done. It's getting dark, but all I have to do is the center post right here. And, oh, down below, like I mentioned before. So I have those two strips to put on. And then this is finished. I'm not gonna get mudding today because it's almost six o'clock. And you probably wanna go home and have some dinner yourself. Your family's probably angry. They're probably going, why are you watching Life of the Moose all the time? Whatever you do, don't stop watching. Oh goodness, you saw the sunrise, right? Yeah. Wasn't bad, was it? Oh, nice day going on here. It's 23 degrees. I brought my thermometer with me. I have a few things in the bag, I'll let you know. Brought my thermometer with me. I wanna see what temperature it is up at the up at the ridge cabin. We're gonna be doing some of that mudding today. All of the mudding today, I hope. So I'm a little bit bundled up. I'm gonna I'm going to put that uh, air compressor in the back of the 4x4, four four, or the side-by-side, side, I should say. And we're going to trek up the mountain that way. I'm excited to get that drywall finished up and maybe put some wood on the walls. Let me show you an interesting little uh, icicles hanging off. Melting and thawing, melting and thawing. It's supposed to be a high of 34 degrees today, so more of that going on. All right, I'm gonna get this red beast going, get it warmed up, throw the compressor in, and we'll get up the mountain and get to work. put it out in the refrigerator. This great big walk-in refrigerator. I'm gonna get the buddy going. I doubt if it's even freezing in here. But I'm gonna get it very toasty so I can get mud on that wall this morning. Let it dry today. So, overnight, I heated up the mud, nice and warm, nice and warm. Keep your mud warm. <laughs> That's a little bit of drywalling advice. Keep your mud warm. So speaking of warm, 
the chili you saw that's out in the refrigerator i'm gonna heat it up on the mr heater big buddy i haven't done it before i'm sure someone has tried it before but i've never tried to cook anything or heat anything on this thing so we're gonna do it we're gonna rig it up one way or another and make it work because hopefully i'm gonna work through lunch up here and uh be productive so that'll be fun try something new okay what else do i got in here no water and another banana oh. i brought that too you know we'll see how warm it's gonna get in here today let's see how warm it is right now let me put this somewhere away from the heater let's put it over here i'll check that in a few minutes and get back to you let's change hats take my coat off i feel like mr rogers every time i come up here my bowl for the chili uh, okay oh. i didn't bring my big battery charger outfit that i had up here a couple episodes ago but i do have this little guy good friend who gave that to me it's a little solar powered power station we use it to charge my cell phone up it works fantastic you saw this deer right pretty cool a lot of deer around today and yesterday you saw those Okay, where we left off yesterday, which was a couple of minutes for you. I'm gonna put a little strip of drywall here and drywall down below. So I'm gonna get at that real quick and then I can do some mudding and taping. didn't take long. I'm gonna do a little clean up here so I don't get crumbs in my mud. You don't want crumbs in your mud. Confucius say, don't put crumbs in your mud. I don't think he said that. I'm just making that up. 48 degrees? Oh, you can see that. Not bad. yesterday when I said I was not a professional drywaller here's a couple things that a drywaller a real drywaller would cringe at blue tape come on I thought I had some drywall tape it comes in either paper or a mesh a fiber mesh tape I don't have either one of them here and I thought I did I was mistaken I'm gonna use blue tape I've never tried it before I'm just going to put some mud underneath it and over it and hope it works. We don't have many seams. Worst case scenario, I have to redo this in a couple of years. I hope not, but we'll find out. This is the smallest knife I have. I don't even know if it'll fit in the, in the mud bucket. But hey, what not to do? <laughs> oh, another thing that the pros really don't like to do is butt seams like that. Uh, they like to butt the seams where the factory edge is because it has a nice bevel, room for the tape there. That usually means more sheetrock. I'm, I'm cheap. I'm cheap when it can be cheap. So I'm just going to make it work.
all you professional drywallers out there, I apologize. Blue tape. What the heck? Got the mudding done. Uh, you might be wondering, am I really done? Look at those screw holes. Well, that's gonna be trim. That's gonna be one solid piece of wood between the windows, wood trim, never gonna see it. I wouldn't have even put it here except for the fact that I needed to build it out so it's all on an even plane. Uh, same with down below. Left the screws there, no reason to go nuts and take the time to fill the screw holes. Same with the size. There's going to be trim all the way around there. Trim in the corner. So it's starting to dry. Most mud kind of reacts the same way. This is uh, goes on kind of a yellowish cream color and dries white. So you can see, like that for example, where it was put on real thin, that's dry already. So maybe this other thick part will be done by, I don't know, tonight, tomorrow morning. We'll see. But yeah, hey. That's called progress. Now what I think I'm gonna do, remember that from the last episode, we gotta put that last piece into the, in the ceiling and then the ceiling will be done. So I'm gonna rip that board. I'm just gonna use my skill saw. I'm not gonna bring the wood down to the barn. I have a table saw down there, but I'm sure I can manage. Okay, what's going on? The last scene, I was just ready to rip that board for the ceiling. And then I heard a couple sputters. Guess who's out of gas? So, ran down to the house because I have a, a bigger propane heater. In fact, let me show you. Right there, right there. Brought that up here, super hot. <laughs> That's the way things are going. Super hot heater, get it up here, and it doesn't work. I have to hold the button in. If I, the second I let the button that starts it, it shuts off, I don't know what the deal is. 
so, guess who's gonna go to town? Yeah, I don't like going to town. I wouldn't go to town if it wasn't for that mud. But that has to get warmed up somehow. So, I'm gonna go get a few supplies and some gas. You stay right here. I'll be back as soon as I can. You saw that big horned sheep down in the valley, right? Yeah, they live up in the up in the rocks, up in the hills, uh, in the national forest, uh, within a couple of miles of the valley down below. But in the winter time, they venture down to the orchards and and help themselves to literally greener pastures. But yeah, it was awesome seeing them. Big buddy is going. I don't know if you can see that or not. This side is the hot side. Yeah, I'm kind of getting hungry. So I'm going to cook myself up some chili here. This is my first attempt. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. As long as I don't hurt anybody. <laughs> Namely me. All right. I have these big old spikes. I'm going to try to set this up to make a little rack. Alright, does that fit in there? Okay. That barely fits right there. Nice and stable. Okay. Robbed this from the grill down below. Oh, look at that. These nails even have a little, little lip on them. Keep the grate from sliding off. Holy cow! Okay. That's hot. Chili. Okay. Now I'm not gonna, hopefully not gonna be a fool and grab this with my bare hands. Ooh, warming up. That really puts out a tremendous amount of heat. If it wasn't for the grease, you could cook a steak on there real easily. Ooh. It's hot enough for me. There was only something I could put this on. Oh, yeah. You can see that steam rolling off of that? Mission accomplished. Uh, I'm going to put a disclaimer here for everyone to sign. So be careful, but it's possible. Mm. Things are heating up in here. All right, I haven't looked since. Since. Isn't that weird how you say stuff like that? 
I have not looked since lunch. Is that about 65 degrees? Huh? 66, maybe. It's warm. But that's good. Mud is dry. Okay. Let's get that thing on the ceiling. Finished it up. Probably see this uh, pretty good gap right there. You know, that's okay. I'm not worried about that because it will all have trim. Plus, once you hit the, the sideboards, that'll cover most of that gap anyway. And then trim on top of that. Well, the drywall is hung, the chili was hot, and the bighorn sheep even posed for the camera. If you like this video, please like below and subscribe, and be sure to share it with others. We'll see you next time as we install pine, tongue, and groove in the off-grid tiny cabin and continue work on the ranch. Until next week, this is Life on the Moose.